Hey, good morning, folks. Good morning. This is Ned and Steve. We're out here on site. We just finished our second typhoon of the season. Typhoon. And then they have another one coming. It's the cold. It's Shoni. So we just finished Roly, and now Shoni's coming. So you can look around. I'll turn the camera around so you could you could see some of the some of the devastation here. We're, we're we were actually really lucky. There was a uh, just a bunch of banana trees, some other stuff that was torn down on the on the uh, in the subdivision here. But, uh, but they already cleaned it. Yeah, they already came through and uh, and, ch and chopped up most of the trees that were connecting the power lines uh, that had knocked them down. So let's spin it around, take a look. You can see at the intersection of where we were actually having our build at, you can see all the all the leaves here. But like I said, we were pretty lucky. There's not a lot of uh, a lot of big trees down. They had one one main tree on the first uh, typhoon that came through that uh, knocked the power out for a couple of days. And unless you had a generator, you were out of luck. Well, let's head head on down to the the build site and give you an update on our progress. It's been about a week since we've been out here. I've intentionally uh, tried to stay away from this here because there's really no point. Because the guys can't pour, uh, pour concrete, <clears throat> can't run the saw, they can't do any of that stuff uh, during, the, uh, during the typhoon, obviously. And sitting to our Right here, right, you can see that the, the uh, part of the C joist uh, setup that we have that's going to go on my, uh, going to go above my first floor. It'll be it'll be the uh, second floor foundation for the for the flooring that the concrete gets poured on, and you can see that there. And you can see the axle beams that they have in place that the crew's working on now taking two sets of guys on each end with a rope and uh, and a bar just to move these things to get them situated they're heavy all made out of cement this is what's going to give us our support you can see the way that they actually actually handle them use a rope bar Old school way. Two guys on each end. And they sack them in the, in the different portions of the room because they're going to go. They're going to span all the uh, second floor, and then those uh, the actual C joists that we looked at earlier are going to lock in place, and then they'll pour the concrete on top of that to give us a. Uh, nice second floor we're still waiting to find out whether or not the uh, cement truck uh, the mixer can get in here I should say the pump truck because of uh, we have some wires that are that are at the front of the property that don't allow or actually restrict the access to it so we're hoping that uh, they're gonna tell us it's okay waiting for the cement engineer to come out take a look at it but well, you can see the you can see where these uh, these concrete beams are, or joists here are going to span the distance from the tie beam to tie beam and that will give you your, your base support of your concrete pour. And you can see the house is actually starting to look like a house for the first time. They, uh, they had the excavator come in and they filled uh, some of the exterior steerer holes. They're still waiting to get inside there, and that's got to be done manually, which is a for me is a good thing because it makes my house or makes our house, makes the family house look like a home or starting to look like a home. It's quite a bit different when it's just sitting out there when you have all those holes in the ground. But now when they've got some type of form to it, it gives you a good feeling inside. So we're excited about that. I can hear the mixer across the street. They're getting ready to uh, 
getting ready to pour uh, the garage, my neighbor's garage with tile, putting that hard pack down. But uh, let me take you around to the back so you can get a view of where we're at on the whole house. It's pretty cool seeing this, uh, seeing the progress when you've been away for a while. We would have had a lot more of the the typhoons hadn't come through here but we're really lucky there was a lot of devastation here in the philippines and we've we've had unfortunately um batangas cut quite a bit of flooding um you had some tragic deaths um due to all the uh all the water and uh that's a really a sad thing when you hear that you hear that anywhere i don't care if you're in the philippines or the united states loss of life is, is, is something that you can't put a price on but these Filipinos are very, very tough people. They're, and, and against all adversity, they continue to, to go forward. They are tough, tough people. I can tell you that. My hat's off to them. For what they had to work with, they make it happen. But uh, getting here, you can see how the house is finally coming together. We've got the different materials stacked around. The house itself getting ready for for the poor they're gonna have to wait to see what that other typhoon brings because they don't want to be putting these uh those sea joists spanning across the the beams they have here and have that weather destroy that so missed my my contractor was on site this morning and i missed him so we got a late start today. Had to run some errands in town. But we can catch up with him. He's here almost. He's here most of the time. Four or five days a week on site at least. Sometimes more. And then he heads over to uh, his other builds. He's got, like I said, he's got builds at some point that he heads over to daily. And the yellow greenfield. And he's got some other builds that are all coming up on paper. So, it's got a lot of stuff going on. Hey, my neighbor uh, shot me an email and asked me to take a quick video of his lot that he purchased over here. So, uh, wanted to give him an idea. He was looking to see what the lot, the lot entailed. So I'd see if I could give him a breakdown here. Oh, he wanted to look at the the grade itself on this, the slope, how much room he had to work with. I don't have his dimensions, but I told him that I would accommodate him if I could, shoot him a video. So you can see Ainsley's in the background over there. And it's got a pretty good pitch here. This is where his grade starts right here. So I'm going to walk the corner of it over here. Give him an idea of what he's got to work with. Start from right here. It's one, two, four, five, six, six three, seven. Figure at uh, 34 times three will give you your give you your width of that lot. Let me walk over here so he gets an idea. From this, I was going to fly a drone over it, but there's really no point in it because by the time you get over Ainsley's roof.
time you get over Angie's roof and get here, you've got those trees. And as far as his, his banana trees in the back, he's got a coconut tree. Well, that's Angie's coconut tree. He's got, he looks like he's got two coconut trees there. Not sure how far up his, his grade goes up the slope, but that should give him a pretty good idea of what he's looking at. Because you have to build on the 25% of your property and you got to conform your designs of your house to the design of your lot. If you have a lot that's uh, that's more of a, an L-shaped, and obviously it's like Ainsley here, you end up doing an L-shaped lot. Or like my lot, go over here, it's flat. So I could pretty much build whatever I want as long as I stayed within the 25% of the house itself. I'm going to give you guys some more. When we start laying those seed joists down, putting that concrete in, I'll, I'll do a full breakdown of how everything ties in and locks up so you get a pretty good idea of what we have here. But I'm glad they got the material delivered now. And like I said, they're they're putting it on the front and they're putting it in the rear. And that all stuff, all that stuff is going to be have to be manually rigged and pulled up um, and hoisted by hand to get it up on top of that ceiling in order to lock the rest of the uh, sea joist plates into place and get ready for that concrete to be poured. See now they got they got six guys. Carrying those, carrying the beams across, which they should have had in the first place, instead of killing the four guys. Now they distribute the weight evenly amongst the six, so they got to be four or five hundred pounds, at least. I was going to ask Dave for the specs on them, but uh, like I said, I missed them earlier, so I'll have to fill you guys in with that information if any of you guys are, are curious about that. But uh, the plan is to get those uh, the sea joists. The, the spans, span that distance, put the put the, uh, the beams in place, put the sea joists in place, pour the concrete, and continue to go up with the concrete hollow block, and then start wor working on the uh, roof structure itself, struts and truss, and then uh, then the actual roof, and then once that's there, um, that'll make a big big difference as far as our ability to work inside and out of the rain. Getting close to the rainy season about about being over anyway, so. Got another couple of months of that and uh, still rains, but uh, it, at least we'll mitigate the chances of it of it happening less. So it's a good thing. All in all, Tia Maria stood up pretty well for what we had. Wasn't any any flooding. I checked out all the uh, I checked out the, the drains in the back. Everything flowed really well. We had a lot of water too. Um, you can see here biggest problem we're going to have here is keeping these drains clear uh, from debris and that's just mad because you can see all the uh, you can see all the stuff that gets caught up in these in these drain these leaves that's where your that's where your issues are going to come from is these leaves and stuff that are plugging these drains that are, that'll cause your, your house to to overflow same thing here you can see how it naturally progresses with the uh, with the leaves there blocking the drains but fortunately, you can see Ainsley's house, how high it is off the, uh, it's a step, it's going to be just like mine, it's going to be the same way. We're going to have to actually step a couple of steps off before it actually gets to the, to the floor, which is a good thing. And mine will have, because you can see where the actual, well, you got this big clump of dirt here blocking the, the main here, but it's going to go. It's definitely going to have at least a step up, possibly two, in the house because the angle goes from high high front to the lower rear. Well, folks, let's head on over to uh, let's head on over to Angie's. They're doing some hard pack on the uh, on the his garage, and I want to see him lay this tile from start to finish. It'll be a good experience for me to learn because they're going to be doing everything they do over his house. They're going to do do it mine. So let's head on over and take a look. First thing they do is they get this thing completely leveled out. 
They try to get it as level as possible to make sure that, that all the conduit that, that needs to be done and laid is all there. They give it a rough level and you can see his, uh, his electrical panel box from here. Let me give you a close up of it. He's got quite a bit of quite a bit of breakers in there. Accommodate his uh, 200 amp box, same size box I want to have it put in mine. So, like I said, he's got a pretty good size build. So after they do the uh, the leveling, they put down the rock on here, and then they it gives them some stability for the uh, for the actual rebar. And they put the rebarb in here, and then they tie that rebarb in place so it gives it a good, gives it a good lock in place on it. So, and then from that point on, they'll they'll make the mix. They'll put that hard pack down. And then after the hard pack is down, they'll go ahead and put uh, put a cement on the back of the tiles itself. And then after, the, after they put that cement on it, they'll, they'll score the back of those tiles and then they'll tap those into place to get what you need here. Let's take a tour, let's take a tour and see what else is going on inside his, his house. I haven't been out here inside his house a couple of weeks. Weather. Here's one of the bedrooms now. Got the tiling done on it. They've been working on the upstairs the most. You can see the difference between, this is a concrete that's not sea joist that they, that they use. They lay this, this type of material in and then pour the actual forms for it where the sea joists are already preformed, which makes a big difference. You can see his versus the way mine's going to look. And the same way it was at some point when, I, when it, if you've had a chance to watch any of the videos out there on the build. Here's going to be a bathroom. That's a nice looking, I love that gray tile. It's got a beautiful look to it. Let's go upstairs and see what they got going on. Well, I got all the tile done now. They've got a lot of different tiles in this in this house this gives us a, uh, a look at the type of tiles you can see this huge window they're going to have in the front of the house and that's a heck of a view it's going to get a nice breeze too when the wind with the wind coming through here you can already feel it up here I'm hoping I get this type of breeze at, at my place and after you get out of the bedroom, you can see that they'll put that first first type of ceiling down on the on this bathroom here, and you can see the actual tile that's going in place there. You can see the metal the metal ceiling struts that are up there now to hold the ceiling in place. Here's a good picture of what his ceiling is going to look like. Sure, no problem, Kuya. Like I said, I really like that. I call it the barnyard look because you've got that uh, exposed metal, the, the thick, heavy metal. It's painted black. It's dirty now, but it's going to get all cleaned up. And then you walk out here, and here's the. Uh, Here's the actual actual tile that's going to go up here. Obviously, you're going to have handrails along here to make it safe. You can see the tiles. I like that on the ceilings. I always like that darker gray look to to the stuff. Still got a lot of work to do, but there's been a lot of focus on here. And I'm surprised because they've had power out for the last. I don't know, three days, at least two that I know of, maybe two and a half. And uh, that's something I'm curious about. I'm looking up here and I'm seeing this. 
this green on that. I wonder how that's going to affect this later on down the road. See all the extra windows have added for light too. Really nice design. Well folks, picture of my wife there taking in the scenery. Again, we're we're happy here that uh, that no there's been no damage to either one of the structures. And uh, None of the workers got hurt. Everybody stayed safe. Here's a picture of that lot next door to the gentleman who was asking what his lot looked like. Let me see if I can get a shot from the backside. Not sure I can. He's going to have a unique challenge on that. No, I'm not able to get that. Uh, that shot. I'm not sure how far up it, how far up that slope. I think they have it all the way up to that uh, that far coconut tree is what uh, is what he's going to have to work with. So I mean, it's quite a bit quite a bit to work with. You just have to you just have to let the imagination go, and, and you can have a beautiful looking piece of property and a nice build if you incorporate that all into a slope type of design versus just a straight out flat like like my lot or this lot over here there's advantages and disadvantages to both it's just whatever your style is and whatever you're looking for to be honest with you I wanted more room uh, on mine I wanted more room that I could use for for my dogs for the kids give them a little play area in the back so that was a big plus for me plus I wanted the privacy and this lot here is going to be private as well because you got you got anything next to you but there's you got a road and then there's another lot across the street and the neighbor behind I'm sure is pretty quiet so you don't have a lot of issues as far as noise goes but my lot's got neighbors on got across the street Ainsley which I know he is and lucky to have him as a neighbor and I got neighbor on the right neighbor on the left but uh, that'll uh, that'll limit the amount of people that I have here so, also limit the noise. All right, folks, we're gonna go ahead and uh, sign off for the day here. We're gonna wish you guys, uh, you know, goodbye, and uh, hope that everybody stays stays as safe as possible during these. Uh, these times and uh, God bless and try to avoid all the uh, all the all the issues that that uh, that typhoons are going to be bringing. We got one more. We get through that. Hopefully that should be the end of it for a while. We should be able to enjoy some good uh, some good weather, good building weather anyway. So, like I said, God bless and take care. Stay safe. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like. Thank you. Alrighty.